Hello and welcome to all my friends. We are going to study a statics problem today. And it's a particular one that I pulled out of Beer Johnston and Mazurik's 10th edition text titled Vector Mechanics for Engineers Statics. That's copyrighted in 2013. It is sample problem 4.6 from page 185. And here's a little schematic of what we're talking about. Here you have a person who's trying to raise a joist of mass 10 kilograms and length 4 meters by pulling on that rope and we want to find essentially the magnitudes of the tensile force in the rope as well as the built up reaction at the ground uh, where the joist is uh, shown at point A there as well as the corresponding orientations of those forces okay so a way to do this problem is to uh, begin with a free body diagram, right? Now, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do this problem. As a matter of fact, there is another way to do this problem, but I'm going to pick what I believe to be the simpler of the two approaches. And in the free body diagram, what you want to do is account for all of the forces. So we have a tensile force that pulls away um, a a by definition, all ten tensile forces are oriented away from the point of application. And then we have um, also the weight of this joist, which is acting at the centroid of that rod, which is midway of its length. So it's a four meter joist. So it's going to happen at two meters from point A. And this is the weight. The weight is, as you know, is the mass times the gravitational acceleration. In this particular case, we can say it's the mass is 10 kilograms, so it's 10 times g. And then we have a reaction force here, which I'll just call A. And you might think that we don't know the orientation of A, but in fact, we really do know the orientation of A, because what I began saying a moment ago, um, an approach that I won't use is the approach of building my force triangle and noticing that this is really a three force member it only consists of three members uh, three forces I should say and I know the orientations of T I also know the orientation of the weight which is straight down so that fixes if I were to build my um, force triangle that really fixes uh, the orientation of A but I'm not really going to go into those details but rather suffice it to say that um, uh, I'm going to choose a, an easier approach to solving this problem, which is using one of the equations of statics to begin with, uh, uh, namely that the sum of the moments about any point has to equal zero. And I'm going to pick that point very carefully by picking it at this point A, which if you'll notice, uh, the reaction force A, its line of action goes directly through point the point A, which I'm interested in summing moments about. And so this force, the reaction force A, uh, disappears. It vanishes because it has no lever arm. Okay, And that leaves me with only one unknown force, namely the T force, the tensile force. Okay, Now, let me also say that when you do the equation of the sum of moments being zero about any point in the plane, you have to give an orientation, and this is perfectly arbitrary. I'm going to choose that counterclockwise be uh, positive, although you could choose count, uh, clockwise, and that would work just as well. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do to simplify all of this is to resolve my tensile force. I'll show the resolution by, first of all, putting a squiggly line through the T, and then I'm going to resolve the tensile force in a um, x and y orientation. Okay. So, well, one thing that we know right off the bat is that this angle right in here was told to us to be 45 degrees. And that means that this angle here has to be 45 degrees. Okay, let me see if I can do that. This has to be 45 degrees. Why is that? Because 
these are what is, are known as alternate interior angles okay and that's something you know from trigonometry or geometry we also were told that the orientation of the tensile force in the rope is oriented at 25 degrees as I just outlined here and that means that this angle right in here has to be 20 degrees it has to be the balance in other words 20 plus 25 gives us back the 45 degree angle there okay now in order to resolve T into um, an X and Y orientation let's do the X orientation we know that in the X orientation my T sub X is going to be the magnitude of the hypotenuse of that times this is the adjacent side so it's going to be cos of 20 degrees and then the other one which is going in the um, Y orientation is the T sub Y is equal to T times obviously sine of 20 degrees now once you have the established that one of them is cos you you know automatically the other one's going to be sine so you don't even really have to think about it I like to think about it just to make sure I didn't make a mistake all right so um, so one so the important thing here is there are two things that are of importance here one is knowing how to use basic trigonometry such as the cos and the sine okay that's basic trig and then the second thing to keep track of is the orientation of the sense of these forces this has to be going downward as you can see based on the fact that my tensile force was pulling away as by definition so when you resolve your tensile force make sure you keep the sense of these uh, ten the components of the tension forces uh, in their proper orientations that's really important okay now we're in a position where we can go ahead and apply this equation of statics so let's go ahead and do that um, so let's begin um, uh, the first force that I may encounter as I move away from point A with a lever arm is that weight. So let's do that. So we have a ten, ten, ten times G force going downward with a lever arm. Here's the lever arm right here. And this lever arm is going to be um, basically half of the length of the rod, which is four halves, times the cos of 45 degrees and we know what the cos of 45 degrees is that's nothing other than um, well okay four halves is two and cos of 45 degrees is um, one over radical two so if I simplify this I get uh, just radical two okay so we get radical two and then we have to be careful because we stipulated that we're choosing counterclockwise to be positive and so because we chose that to be positive this is actually going to rotate, the weight is going to rotate about point A in a clockwise fashion, so it's going opposite what we assume to be positive. Now we have two other forces to deal with, actually they're one in the, they're part of one force, the tensile force, but the components are two. So let's do um, the TY. So the TY is also going to spin it around in a clockwise fashion, so minus T sine of 20, times its lever arm and its lever arm is um, in this case double this amount okay this is all perfectly oriented at 45 degrees so I can just say 2 times radical 2 no problem there and then the last one is going to be the X component and so that is going to spin it about A in a counterclockwise fashion which is the assumed positive direction so we get T cos of 20 degrees times 2 radical 2 and all of this must be equal to 0 and then what we notice when we look at this equation is that we have a radical 2 as a common factor throughout so if I were to divide both sides by radical 2 those radical 2's disappear and then if I also divided both sides by that's my abbreviation for divide both sides by 2 then I'm going to get um, a minus 5g minus uh, t sine of 20 degrees divided by that this 2 right here divided by the 2 that I'm dividing by makes it a 1 and then likewise plus t cos of 20 degrees 
is equal to zero. As a matter of fact, I have a, t a common factor of t in both of these latter two terms. Let me just pull that out and I'm going to write this this way because we have a common factor. Okay, And we're really interested in solving for this unknown t and we're almost there. So let's do that. So t, if you solve for it, is um, is going to equal uh, oh, I made one mistake when I did this factoring. We had a minus here and a plus there. Okay, So now t is going to equal, uh, when I take this minus 5g to the other side, I get 5g positive divided by, let me write the cos first, minus the sine. And if you stick all that stuff in the... Uh, you know, the g, le let me take g to be 9.81 uh, meters per second squared, and then, of course, do all of this cos 20 degrees minus sine 20 degrees on the bottom. Uh, when I did it on my calculator, I'm getting something about oh, um, 82.07 newtons if I go out to the hundredths decimal place, roughly. And, well, I know the orientation of that. It's very plain. We already discussed that. It's uh, Here's the T-force, and it's at 20 degrees. Okay? So there's the orientation of it. What remains for us to do now is to find the A, and I can find the A simply because... Now I've got two additional equations of statics. Let me do this in a different color so it kind of sticks out. Um, let's do the simpler one first. Uh, if I were to look at the uh, horizontal direction, I can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction must be 0. And let me just pick this to be plus the, to the right. So that means that I have the minus tx, which was uh, minus t cos of 20, the weight doesn't even come into this because it's perfectly going downward, so that doesn't come into this discussion. And then the only other one that I have is the A uh, force, which um, is going to be, let's say, let me draw it here. Uh, if I were to break this into its components, I'm going to have an A sub X, and then I'm going to have a A sub Y, right? So it's going to be the a sub x is, let's say, plus a sub x is equal to 0. Solve for ax. ax is going to equal, take this stuff to the other side, you get t cos of 20 degrees. And when you do that, uh, out to hundredths decimal place, I'm finding ax to be 77.12 mm, newtons. And it's oriented to the right, right, and then uh, we have to do the same idea this way with this other equation from statics. The sum of the forces in the vertical direction must be zero, and when you do that, um, you're going to get the following. You're going to get uh, minus T sine of 20, that's this guy going downward, minus the 10 times g from the weight. That's that one going downward. All right. And then uh, we have one more, which is this one right here. And that's going upward. So plus a y equal to 0. Solve for a y. And then you get that a y, if you solve for that, is coming to 126.07. And it is, in fact, oriented upward. And now we're almost done because I know that my A, the magnitude of my reaction force, which is this red one down here, has to equal the sum of the square root, sorry, the square root of the sum of the squares of these other two forces, AX squared plus AY squared. And if you put those in, you're going to find that the magnitude of your A force is working out to be, let's see if I did that, maybe I didn't, 
So let me do that on my calculator real fast. This is going to be the square root of um, 77.12 squared plus 126.07 squared. Okay, let's see what this is. It appears to be about 147.79. And the orientation of this, let's say, um, let's suppose that I did my uh, angle. Let me call this angle right in here. I'll do it in a different color so you see it. Let's call this our angle theta. Then theta is obviously going to be the arc tangent of the ratio of a y over a x and so the theta is going to equal arc tangent of let's see what is that a y is 126.07 over 77.12 so theta is going to equal Fifty-eight point five, roughly, degrees. So let's write out our answer. That means that our a, let me write it here, is equal to one forty-seven point seven nine newtons oriented at fifty-eight point five degrees. Okay, um, hope that made sense to you. Uh, once again, we solved this entire thing using simple equations of statics, namely the three equations of planar statics are the sum of the, uh, we started with the sum of the moments about any point to be zero. We picked our point carefully so that one of my two unknown forces, go its line of action passes right through that and it vanishes and I'm left with one unknown, one equation in one unknown. And then after I did that, I applied my two equations in, in the uh, horizontal and vertical directions to be zero respectively. And then I can use uh, the result from Pythagorean's theorem, namely a squared has to equal the sum of the squares of its components. And then use a little trigonometry to find its orientation. And we're in business, okay? Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in a future video.